ओके फॉरवर्ड लेट गो स्टाबा टैंक Hello guys welcome back I am your friend Nawaf and you are watching Shipmet Nawaf Kazi Friends today's video is going to be very interesting and you will see 10 points before dropping anchor if you are a duty officer or if you are going to become an officer if you are preparing for your exams if you are going to appear for your MMD orals this video might be for you so stay tuned and watch till the end because I will be discussing 10 such points you need to consider by each one of us prior dropping anchor Let's begin this video. So yes friends the first point to consider is the location of the anchorage what is the location what is the sea room available to you at that location what is the traffic and how many vessels at that anchorage this is very important to determine prior you reach at the anchor position so yes guys the second important point after location is the depth of water available at the anchorage it is very important to determine the depth because as per the classification society rules and windlass is capable to heave the weight of the anchor and weight of three lengths of the cable that is 27.5 meters is the length of one shackle multiplied by 3 comes to 82.5 meters so an windlass can comfortably heave 82.5 meters of cable that is why it is important to determine the depth of the anchorage and also there are few things associated with the depth of the anchorage we will see as we move ahead in this video let us quickly move on to point number 3 point number 3 friends is the most important nature of the seabed nature of the seabed is very important because it determines the holding power of your anchor if you are staying at anchorage for a long duration or for a short duration you need to ascertain that your anchor is not dragging and the nature of the seabed is one thing that gives you an early indication how is the holding ground available in that anchorage mud sand or shingles if this is the nature of seabed it is a very good holding ground for you pebbles or soft mud is not a very good holding ground for you especially if you are at the anchorage for a long duration of time and the nature of seabed is pebbles or soft mud your anchor is going to drag very slowly sometimes it becomes difficult for you to immediately identify from bridge that your vessel is dragging anchor and it could be a rocky bottom also you have to be very careful when it is rocky bottom your anchor might get stuck into some of the rocks and it will be difficult to heave so friends how will you find out the nature of the seabed the nature of the seabed can be found out from the admiralty sailing directions this is available on board now it is digitalized you can see from that before reaching the port what is the nature of seabed you are expecting if you are using a ecdis chart you can also see in the properties of the chart and you can also identify what is the nature of seabed where you intend to drop anchor once you have decided what is the location once you have decided what is the depth of the water available and once you have decided what is the nature of seabed the next point to consider is which anchor and how many shackles you going to use so anchor which anchor you can use either port or starboard whichever anchor at any given point of time both your anchors should be ready to be used so you can normally what we do is we use alternate anchors like last port i used port anchor so this time i'm going to use starboard anchor you can decide on your own so what is the cable length you should expect a thumb rule is 6 times the depth of water so if the water depth is let's say 30 meters 30 into 6 is 180 meters 180 meters of cable length that comes to around 6 and a half shackles so you can lower to 6 and a half or 7 shackles and you should be perfectly all right this is considering the weather conditions or the weather limitations for that anchorage we will move ahead in this video and you will see more about weather conditions friends the most important point is point number 5 weather forecast it is very important when you are going at anchor to ascertain the weather forecast from the weather reports or if you have any weather software approved by the company and to see what is the weather going to be because if you see the incident cases most of the loss of anchor or dragging anchor incidents have happened because of bad weather and it is very important to note down what is the weather depending upon that you might choose whether to anchor or no you might choose how many lengths of cable you need to pay out or you might choose whether you want to stay at anchorage or move out to sea do you know what are the classification society rules for the weather at what with weather max the anchor can withstand so as per classification society a wind speed of 48.5 knots and a current of 4.85 knots it's easy 485 48.5 knots of wind and 4.85 knots of current these are the rules as per classification society for which the for which the anchor can withstand this is the maximum upper limit but this is not the this is not the figure you need to look for when you go on board your ship your sms your company sms might have 
lower limitations at which the anchor has to be heaved up and moved out at sea. This is very important to keep in mind because maximum accidents and incidents at anchorage happen in bad weather. Not because of anything else but because of bad weather. If you are still with me in this video, may I humbly ask you to subscribe to my channel and like this video and let us quickly move ahead and see what we have more. Point number 6 guys, which method you want to use for anchoring? There are basically three types of methods which you can use for anchoring. One is the let go method wherein you let go the anchor from its position of the hose pipe or lower it slightly below the hose pipe and let go by brakes. This method is used mostly when you are in a depth of 20 to 25 meters and when the nature of seabed is soft mud. The second method of dropping anchor, lowering by vidlas to around 10 meters above the bottom and then let go by brakes. This is usually done for a depth of 25 to 50 meters because you don't want the anchor to hit down directly on a rocky bottom and which might even damage your anchor. So this is the second method which can be used. Both these methods are let go methods wherein we drop the anchor by the help of the brakes. And the third, the third method for dropping anchor is called as walk back method wherein you don't disengage the clutch, you keep it engaged, your anchor is on the windlass motor and you lower it with the power of the windlass. This is usually done for a depth more than 50 meters. This method is critical friends because it might happen that your ship speed is more than the payout speed of the windlass and that might result into strain and or stress on the cable and it might even lead damage to your windlass or the motor. Point number 7 is also very important friends, speed of the vessel. Anchor, make sure that the vessel is stopped or nearly stopped. A method to see this is go on the bridge wing give a stern movement and when you see the wake of the propeller coming close to your accommodation, break of accommodation for an aft accommodation ship, that means your vessel is ideally stopped uh, at sea and then this, that is the ideal time to drop anchor. This is a method which has been taught to me by my old masters. It is an old time method but now you have all the gadgets, you can see the speed directly from your uh, radar or from your like this screen and you can also decide accordingly but it is very important to have minimum speed and if there is any speed it should be a speed astern going astern very minimum speed so that the cable is laid out properly and there is no piling up of cable on the bottom it friends is very important is the scope of the cable what is scope of the cable it is basically the ratio of length of cable paid out to the depth available so basically classification society requirements again come here a scope of 6 to 10 is advisable but at any given point of time the scope should not be less than 3. Scope of the cable determines how good your anchor is going to hold. Point number 9 friends, condition of machinery. You are going at an anchorage, it might be a congested anchorage, it might be open anchorage. What you need is your engines, your steering. That is the most important point because in case of emergency if you are not able to drop the anchor as advised or as planned by you you have the engines to move out all the way from the anchorage but if your engines are faulty or if your windlass your power pack your hydraulic systems is not good you might be in a problem so make sure all your machinery is good is tested prior to reaching the anchor position point number 10 is also very important it is communication all this what we have discussed all the nine points have to be communicated to the anchor party as well it is not only for the bridge team so communication between you and the person who is forward stations in charge for the anchoring it has to be crisp and clear they should there should be understanding prior going to the anchorage which anchor we are going to drop what is the depth of the water what is the nature of the seabed and how many cables how many shackles of anchor we are going to drop and the method of anchoring so all these are important points which you need to consider prior dropping anchor you need to understand that anchoring is a job which might be dangerous at times and it might cause many many problems for the vessel for the machinery for the crew so guys if you like the video i would humbly request you to subscribe like the video stay tuned this is nawab signing off for now see you in the next video bye bye